China imports over $300 billion worth of semiconductors each year. The country is reliant on chip technology imports for its high technology products. China correctly recognizes this as a potential weakness to their future economy. So in 2014, they rolled out a $20 billion national fund to help develop a domestic chip industry. And the government has made it clear that they want to be able to make cutting edge chips within just a few years. And it appears that they are willing to spend almost whatever it takes in order to create this homegrown industry. Such demands will always give rise to charlatans. In this video, we look at one really big charlatan, Wuhan Hongxing Semiconductor Manufacturing, HSMC, or just Hongxing. I will use the two terms interchangeably. The company was founded in November 2017. Right from the start, they wanted to go big. Their website said that they will start off making up to 30,000 wafers a month, first with 14 nanometer process node generation technology, and then with 7 nanometer process node generation technology. 30,000 wafers, depending on the wafer size, would mean that a startup foundry would spin up a fab with a capacity matching one of TSMC's mega fabs in Shinchu. And in about two years, I guess not all that impossible since TSMC has done it, they spun up their fab 18 gigafab, which makes some 100,000 wafers a month in 2.5 years, but they're TSMC. In order to prove their bona fides, HSMC did two flashy things. In July 2019, they hired Chang Shangyi as their CEO. Chang had been the R&D vice president at TSMC. The 75-year-old had also been an independent director for SMIC, the uh, state-owned one, from 2016 until his hiring at Hongxing. Chang is a legit expert in chip making, and his contributions to TSMC are pretty impressive. So that got a lot of buzz. Second, in December 2019, they managed to purchase a twin scan NXT 1980DI DUV lithography scanner from ASML, the Dutch company that is the world's only supplier of these high advanced things. Having one of these multi-million dollar devices theoretically gives you the ability to etch chips up to the 10 nanometer level. It costs about 581 million RMB or 87 million USD. Hongxing made a big deal out of this purchase. They did a big public ceremony announcing it. They would claim that they had the only device in China capable of creating 7 nanometer node generation chips. This is not true. And then literally a month later, they took out a bank loan using the twin scan device as collateral. The bank statement says that the device is new and was never used. This is not a good sign. First, you know, there's the lying. And second, they immediately turn around and remortgaged it for cash. And this is a sign that I think is going to keep going. It's a common theme. On the surface, the project began to attract a lot of government funding. First, a lot of it came from the city of Wuhan. In September 2018, the city featured 33 projects in the high-tech and manufacturing worlds. Wuhan claimed to have invested a total of $16 billion into these projects. Hongxing and another company had received 80% of that $16 billion. The public relations article announcing this investment said that Hongxing had received the most money from Wuhan. They had received 636 acres of land with a 636,000 square meter building currently under construction. The total planned cost of the project would be 128 billion RMB or roughly 20 billion USD. And it would provide 3,000 high value jobs for the city of Wuhan. At the end of 2019, Hongxin had supposedly received 2 billion USD from the Wuhan city government. In 2020, it anticipated to receive another 1 billion USD. I never saw any indication that it received the full 20 billion uh, as planned. At the same time, the company began to join in the crazy race for Taiwanese semiconductor talent. They offered salaries 2 to 2.5 times the market rate for employees from TSMC's R&D market. They would poach some 100 people from the company, and a few news articles were written about it. See this quote here. But like I said, right, like this is a common theme. They, the company doesn't seem to be actually be making money. They're burning cash like really fast. The first indication that things weren't going well happened in July 2020. An article by the construction company subcontractor building out HSMC's facilities Wuhan Huanyu Foundation Engineering accused the company of not paying its bills of some $5 million. They would take the company to court in order to get paid. And this is where it gets 
kind of shady. Hongxing, the public entity, turns out to be 90% owned by a shell company set up by two people, Li Shiryan and Cao Shen. Li Shiryan has no prior experience in semiconductors. Her corporate ownership stakes consist of a Chinese liquor retailer, a few catering companies, and a few medical companies. The shell company did not invest any money into Hongxing. The majority of the money seems to have either come from either the local Wuhan government or through loans from the construction subcontractors themselves. Not only that, you get indications of wages not being paid, job offers being rescinded or pushed back, bank accounts being frozen, and the Hebei Provincial Court took back land usage rights for 300 acres of the land granted to Hongxing due to all of these bills not being paid. So, you know, here's what's really confusing to me. If the company really received those billions of dollars from the Wuhan government as claimed in that press release, where did it go? Why can't it pay a measly $5 million to its construction subcontractor? Just think about it. If they received $3 billion, did that building really cost $3 billion? We know $87 million of that supposedly went into the twin scan machine, but then $87 of it came back because it immediately went to, they immediately remortgaged it back. So they basically spent nothing for it. Anyways, this is all really confusing. Like, it just, I just don't know where this money went. But my guess is that Hongxing had sort of a Silicon Valley bootstrap vibe. They wanted to put as little money as they possibly could from the start, using the classic strategy of other people's money. They strung themselves along based on their own hype and cash from local governments. Such local city officials are easy to bamboozle with fancy words. The Wuhan local government bureaucrat. You dangle them the possibility of having a TSMC in their own city. They will believe it because they want to. It's like the Wisconsin Foxconn situation, but just in China. But the local governments themselves did not have enough money to get HSMC up and running. They could just grant them small things. They don't really have all that cash lying around. Land usage rights that might be worth a lot on paper, but that isn't cash. You can't use it. So management realized they needed to go bigger. And they bet on being able to con successively hire governments, local to district to provincial, with the final goal of getting access to the central government's national semiconductor cash spigot. That's the big time. That's the big win. But then, the construction subcontractor dispute in December 2019 stopped them. The court case prevented them from making a successful application for funds from the National Semiconductor Fund. And then the pandemic finally ended things for good, and the plans fell through. For the most part, I think the one HSMC co-founder is on to greener pastures. Tao Shan, the other co-founder, the one who doesn't own a liquor store, exited the HSMC parent company and started another semiconductor company in Zhuhai, Yixin Integrated Technology. He hires another ex-TSMC person, Sha Jingchou, as the CEO and set up two other companies like HSMC, Quanxing Integrated Circuit Manufacturing and Yunxin International Integrated Circuit Manufacturing. It's all just the same model all over again, except with different local governments. What a grifter. So basically, this guy is just going from different to different cities and saying, we can build a TSMC for you, give us money, and we will apply to the National Semiconductor Fund, we will build this TSMC, we'll have all these jobs, your, your city is going to be the greatest, and you're, you know, you're going to get promoted because you have created this amazing industry. Um, so, so you can e easily see why this, is, why this model works for them. HSMC is a really sad story, but it's not the only one. In 2019, you have a company called Dehuai Semiconductor in uh, Jiangsu province collapsing under the weight of unpaid wages and lawsuits. They got 700 million USD in investment, but still ended up over 14 million in debt. July 2020, Dakema in Nanjing went bankrupt. They had raised 3 billion from investors, including the municipal government, to build indigenous image sensor chips. All they had for that, in the end, were two unfinished buildings. Not a single wafer was ever made. So China's financial and tech markets seem to have these sort of fevers when they just go all out in some industry. Think of the ride-sharing wars between Uber and Didi, and then you have the bike-sharing wars in China, which were really crazy. I feel like the same fever is starting to roll over semiconductor manufacturing in China. SMIC went public on Shanghai and in Hong Kong, and the stock exploded some 100% in the first day of trading. 
They're building mini campuses with Korean and Taiwan themed accommodation. So to house the dozens and dozens, I guess hundreds and maybe hundreds of chip engineers they're planning to poach from Samsung and TSMC. It's kind of nuts and it's kind of a waste. And I'm like one of the more optimistic people in kind of around. I do think if China is determined enough, they can succeed in this industry. They really can. And I really believe that. But they need to concentrate and work at it with a focus, long-term focus. Because semiconductor manufacturing is way different from an internet startup. Any schlub can start a website and then offer a service. You don't start a foundry without access to serious national level amount of resources. Not just a Mount Kilimanjaro of cash, but also a base of expertise, infinite patience, and so much talent building. None of that comes along in two years, five years, and even 10. Ask Singapore. They once tried to do this too, until the government lost interest and then moved on to other things. Their founding industry, it's here, it's still around, but it's just eh. It hangs around, but it's just there. It hasn't gone anywhere, it's not the sexiest, it's not at the cutting edge. China should study hard the lessons that Singapore learned in trying to build their foundry industry. And I've looked at a few failures here. I think the common thing on all of these failures, the luck and coffee one, uh, Yizu Bao, I think the common thing of all these failures is that the company founders wanted to get in and out as fast as possible. And, but you know, that's actually, I feel it to be a China thing as well. There's one other company out there that I, you know, that's not a failure, not a fraud, but uh, Pinduoduo, really big, founded in something like 20, 2016, 2015, became a billion dollar company two years later, and then was IPO'd, and then the CEO retired in like four years after kind of founding it. It's crazy. That's just how they want to do things. They want to do things really, really fast. And I think people want results really, really fast. But I think the thing about doing things really, really fast is that it tends to cause mistakes. And that's fine for a lot of things, but not for semiconductor manufacturing. Doing so is a formula for fast failure, and you don't even need to be a grifter to kind of create failure out of out of that situation. So in the end, I think the Hongxing thing, I I think it's a fraud. I think it's a, I, I originally started calling it a fraud, but you know, it's hard to tell, right? You don't really know if this company just blew up and tried really fast to grow and failed, just legitimately failed, or they took you know, $500 million, hired these people, got this PR, tried to build a building, and then they kept the billion and a half for themselves. We don't know. And I think, you know, the, the Chinese government says that they're going to try to get more focused on these things. So maybe in the future, there won't be that. But in the end, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it, I called it a failure rather than a fraud. Um, but regardless, in the end, what you have is a city that has kind of wasted his time and lost a lot of money of taxpayers money and now you have uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of hype that's gone to nothing all right everyone have a good night take care of yourself bye bye